It's an ancient passage that says something to the fact that if you let a fool talk enough, he'll eventually hang himself with his own tongue. And that happened recently, and I, uh, very recently, and I'm not going to mention this person's name. His name begins with an F. You might call him the flip-flopping fraud. Um, <laughs> and his exact words were, this is not the video, but I just had to mention this because it's so hilarious and so disgusting at the same time. And uh, he said, well, if you attack me, then you're really attacking science. And I just, and he said it again in a slightly different way. And, you know, he's a short little guy with glasses, that, uh, an unelected, uh, you know, uh, government fraud, you know. His name, his first part of his name literally means fake, or foe. And the last part of that name was ch chi meaning energy, so it's kind of probably like fake energy or, you know, synthetic life. It's kind of appropriate that your name means fake life or fake energy. Um, yeah, he says, if you attack me, you're attacking science. That reminds me of what the popes used to do centuries ago. So you, you know, any attack on the pope is an attack on the church or attack on Christianity. It was just that kind of hubris, that kind of insane hubris is so vile so reprehensibly disgusting that if anybody has even the tiniest bit of wisdom, it's like, wow, that's... The fool just hung himself with his own tongue. Like, now the truth comes out. I love that, uh, I think it's ancient Chinese saying, is that there's uh, oh, three things that can only be hidden for so long. The sun, the moon, and the truth. You give enough rope to a person, they'll eventually hang themselves, as I say. But yeah, the, f the fool always hangs himself. As well. So I f that happened in the past 24 hours. Like, well, there we go. There's the, the words that need to be uh, framed in a picture. Unbelievable. Laughable and disgusting at the same time. I feel like a, uh, a, uh, a, a journalist, because I've been talking to a lot of people that I don't know, literally random people. I just I come up to them and say, hey, um, I don't immediately ask the question, I'll say something about, oh, you know, that's a really cool dog you got there, or uh, something like that. And I'll ask them a question about what's going on in the world. I've literally not come across a single person this past year and a half, and I've asked a lot of strangers. People have no idea. And I don't push them one way or the other. Everybody thinks that the world has just gone absolutely nuts. The world has uh, gone completely nuts. Um, I don't know what you think about that. You could uh, tell me I'm wrong. Um, I've tried to, uh, even though I'm on the computer a lot, unfortunately, you know, I, I was out picking up my uh, 10 acres of land, you know, in the very, very far, deep, southern, eastern part of Kentucky. And uh, I was talking to the real estate agent and the closing agent there about what's going on in far, far eastern Kentucky, near the Virginia border. And they said that people are buying stuff sight unseen like crazy. Now, the Pikeville area is just heck and gone from like everything. You're up in the mountains. I mean, you are really, really removed from a lot of stuff. People there are so nice. They really, really are very nice. They said that what's happening right now is that people from New Jersey, New York, California especially, and Michigan are buying there in like the deepest, deepest, deepest parts of, of far, far eastern Kentucky. Yeah? Like crazy. The real estate's gone nuts. Just think about that for a second. California, and of course this is where people are fleeing. People are fleeing the insanity and all these, uh, you know, these fools rioting and burning stuff. I mean, wouldn't you want to flee that filth? And it is filth. You know, it's, it's extremely bestial. It's filth. Um, as the old saying goes, by their deeds so shall ye know them. Um, people that have no ability to construct anything or build anything or do anything positive. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff going wrong here. Let's get together and see how we can fix this. That's constructive. You know, you go out and, 
you know, you destroy stuff and you burn it and you smash it, then you are what uh, our ancestors, I mean, near ancestors, you know, meaning like one or two generations, we, we call them filth mongers or filth merchants, you know? We used to call people that uh, peddled, uh, you know, the X-rated stuff, you know, they call them merchants of filth. And I don't care what anybody reads or does or watches on the internet, but I mean, you know, people that, you know, destroy society and want to, you know, burn it all, you know. You're, you're just a merchant of filth. I mean, that's, that's what it is. It's filth merchant. And so people obviously do want to leave that. And I was surprised. That really, actually, I was not surprised at all, but I was surprised that it was so much. Um, I drove over 300 miles yesterday to pick up the, my deed to my land down there. And, uh, so yeah, people of California, uh, New York, New Jersey, Michigan, they're all buying here, sight unseen. So they're moving to that super, not like Lexington where I am here, you know, it's a pretty big city. They're moving to like all these people in these big cities where all the filth is going on. They're like, let's, I'm not saying like, let's come to Kent like Lexington or Atlanta or something. Let's get away from the crazy and go to the south. No, let's go to the most remote part of the south. Like really remote. Man, I tell you what, Pikeville is remote. I mean, you got to do this number or go up the mountains and go down and to, you know, you are, you are gone. You've reached the land of Xanadu down there. I mean, you are really removed. And that's where the Cal... That really, really tells you something. Uh, human beings fundamentally follow natural order, and they will work off of pressure. You know, it gets bad, like, we're leaving this, you know. Can't fix it. Politicians don't listen to us. They'll, they'll, they'll give you the middle, the middle one right there to, uh, to uh, the locals and the government. It's like, you know, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Um, very, very telling. Um, I think a lot of people are doing what I'm doing. You're taking up fundamentalist living, raw living, simple living, reaching out to your neighbors, making neighborly connections. This is what happened in much of the 1700s, 1800s, and early 1900s. We're kind of going back to that. Um, I'll tell you flat out, um, uh, the government is not and never will be, never has been your friend. People are starting to wake up to that fact. There is nothing that any government does well, or, you know, they, they never serve uh, the people very well. The government is supposed to be there for uh, war and uh, a few other things, but, you know, they're trying to stick their tentacles into every aspect of everybody's life. And anybody with a half a brain knows that's completely disgusting. Um, a lot of people, and I have to make a correction, I say people are lazy and they don't want to work. What's happening is, is that people have had the time off of work during all this nonsense that's gone on the past year and a half, and they realize how stupid the game is, and they just don't want to play the game anymore. People say, well, the government's cutting off their benefits. They're not getting any free money anymore, and that is true, and yet these people still don't want to go back to work, and I'm nearly certain that for the vast majority of them, it's a psychological awareness that it's like, no matter how hard I work, I just get taxed to death, and it's getting... You know, I'm tired of playing the game. It's kind of like the, the donkey and the carrot. You know, if the donkey were a little smarter, he's like, you know, I'm never going to get the carrot. I'm tired of playing this game. I'm not going to keep chasing this carrot. So even though people's benefits have been cut, they don't want to go back to work. Understandably so, because, like, you know, all I do is work my butt off. My life is robbed from me. Um, I can't do anything I want. You know, I, I'll just stay poor, but at least my time is my own. Um... I have that personally to complain about myself. I work seven days a week. Um, I'm never able to take a day off. Um, I do a lot of writing and I do a lot of stuff, but I, I don't. I don't have a life of my own, to be honest with you. And uh, that's a horrible admission, but at least it's an honest one. And I don't like that fact. You know, I don't have a wife. I don't have a kids. You know, I don't have brothers or sisters. I don't spend time with other people. I don't go out and socialize. Not that I'm opposed to it at all. I literally don't have time for it. I, all I do is just, you know, you know, I spent all day yesterday driving up into far, far eastern Kentucky 
to get a deed to my land. I'm not going to turn down 10 free acres, though, right? I mean, that's worth it, of course. But it's just every day, it's just... I was in live stream last night. We had a lively live stream. But I... Right at the end of live stream, I was so ill from sleep deprivation and overwork. And I took a mega dose of vitamin C, which helped a lot. But, I mean, I just crashed. I crashed so hard. Um, I find it funny and... Uh, and unwise that some people, when I was talking about being prepared, there is no downside to being prepared unless you take it too far. You know, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Um, preparing for a crazy future, future. You don't want to be, get caught with your pants down, as the old saying goes. And you just don't. There's no downside, you know, to being prepared. You know, you can live a happy life and yet also, too, at the same time, have your head on a swivel and watch what's going around you and being prepared. It's called situational awareness. Multi-spectral level, multi-layer level of situational awareness. Um, people, meaning you guys, and other people I talk to, because I do feel like a reporter, I talk to a lot of strangers. You know, very kind of like, hey, you know, I'll say something funny about something. I'll ask them questions. and Especially like, you know, the real estate agents about what's going on. Well, wow, I got an earful on some amazing stuff. Talking to the local lady in the diner where we, me and my buddy got a cheeseburger yesterday up in Far Eastern Kentucky. About, wow. You know, wow. I do keep my head on a swivel. A lot of people, a lot of you were reporting that the power is going out where you're at. Several of you said, uh, like, I've lived here my 30, 40 years. Power's never gone out except maybe 30 years ago. All of a sudden, it's going out like every week. Um, a few days ago, a huge uh, portion of the Internet went out, including much of the British government and a uh, significant portion of Amazon. I'm not going to conjecture or speculate on that, but everybody, everything seems to... Everybody does feel, and I even said that in the last video, everybody feels like... Uh, uh, their life is in limbo. We're just like sitting in the eye of a hurricane. There is only one person in that video of the thousand plus comments that disagreed with me. It's like, oh man, everything's fine where I'm at here. You know, my jobs are back and everything's fine. I just think you're being crazy. There's only one person that disagreed with me, which is an incredibly low number. In any video that I make, there's usually, you know, 10% or so that uh, disagree with whatever it is I say on anything, which is fine, but there's only one person that disagreed. So everybody, Essentially, other than one person who's obviously has their head in the sand. Everything's fine, nothing going on, you know, everything back to normal. I really, really, really do hope and uh, I want to say pray, but I really do hope that everything does go back. I have not yet, and this is an important point. Yeah, I know I got a bandage on my finger. I have not yet come across a single person, and I mean this, comment or in public, I've not come across a single person that thinks that things are going to go back the way they were. Not even one. I mean that. Not even one person has said that or indicated that to me. Not even one. Here's another point, too, and I'm glad a person brought this up. I've not made a video about it, but I hold the same position and always have. This person says they always figured out if someone was a fool or not by asking them about genuine evil. He has a specific question and he asks about it, but the point being is that if the person he's talking to doesn't believe that genuine evil exists, then they're shunned, they're not hired, they're ignored, they're just shunned. You know, basically blacklisted, you know, from interacting with that person. I think he, I remember he, you used to be a lawyer or something like that? The person that told me that? Doesn't really matter. But that's a wise position. I've not made a video on that, but I hold the exact same uh, case. There's some, there's this, especially today, people just think, you know, true evil doesn't exist. And, oh yeah, it does exist, actually. It does. Um, there's a lot of people that are just relativists. They just think it doesn't. And uh, I myself do shun those people. Um, 
I have my own test. Not that I really employ that test on other people. Say, what's the wisest thing you've ever read? Not like the coolest thing or the most favorite thing, but what's the wisest thing you've ever read? Depending on what their answer is, like, oh, this person knows nothing. It's a really easy question any employer, which they would never do, but any employer uh, could use on a potential employee. It's like, what's the wisest thing you've ever read? It's not a difficult question. It's not what your favorite thing or your coolest thing, but the wisest thing you've ever read. Their answer is better than any, uh, um, you know, anything submitted um, for a job application. Way better than a job application or a resume. You tell immediately whether someone's worthy or not to work with you, for you, etc. Exactly what I predicted on hyperinflation. Something else people say, why'd you get more land? Of course, this 10 acres was free. I mean, I did work for it, you know. So it's not free, but it's kind of free. You say, why are you, uh, you know, why are you getting more land? Because of hyperinflation, there's a thousand reasons to own land. Hyperinflation, yeah, money sitting in the bank, just sitting there, no matter what your interest you're making off of it, which is probably nothing, is going like this. Money sitting there is losing its value every day. It's not in land. The opposite is having it, uh, is uh, going into effect. Of course, you have to buy wisely when it comes to land. You just don't buy land. It to be a wise purchase, of course, and I know how to do that. So far, I have a 100% track record on getting land. 100% track record. Um, you know, it feeds you. It, it protects you. So it feels like, oh, you property taxes, you don't really own it. You know, give it up with that nonsense, okay? I don't want to hear that. It's just poppycock, yeah? Because I pay, you know, an insignificant portion of property taxes. doesn't mean the land's not mine. It's mine until, you know, I kick the bucket. You know, it feeds you, it gives you housing, gives you all sorts of stuff, it gives you food. Um, it's a huge hedge against hyperinflation, which is exactly what's going. I had so many people tell me, it's like, oh, hyperinflate. When I said this last year and the year before that, I said, hyperinflation is coming. He said, no, it's not. It's like, well, it's here. It's here and it's getting worse every day. Do you see what chicken and meat prices and bacon prices and gas, you see how much they've gone up? It's crazy. Um, chance favors the prepared mind and if ever in the history of either my life you know the 50 years I've been around or the past hundred whatever if ever there's been an excuse for people to have their head on a swivel and be prepared for contingencies now is the time and that's not like a chicken little the sky is falling statement it's a statement of wisdom there is no downside to it unless you get crazy. You know, you like buy a bunch of food and wall yourself up in the basement kind of crazy. <laughs> That's taking it too far. That's, you know, I go out every day and, you know, live my life to the fullest extent, you know, in, in my own way. You know, I don't party or drink or, you know, do other stuff that normal people do, I guess. Um, met some people I know today. I'm so darn busy. I just don't have time to do anything. But, you know, try to live a full life. And yet, at the same time, have my head on a swivel and be prepared. There's no downside to that. That's the best way to live. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Who on earth is going to say that there's a downside to that? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. It's impossible to say that there is an unwise uh, position to take that um, worldview. There is no downside. Oh. Tell me what you think. I love reading every comment. I'm trying to get, I was supposed to take the day off today because I felt so bad. The only reason I'm able to make these videos today is because megadose of vitamin C. I felt so bad yesterday from extreme exhaustion. I've been burning the candle so hard at both ends. I just thought I was going to die last night. And man, I felt bad. Still kind of do, but. <sighs> so. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll return to normal. <laughs> in 24 hours or so. <laughs> yeah, I also, too, cut my finger. That's why I got a Band-Aid on it. Thank you. Lux Everettos. It was nice uh, reading your comments, folks.